Pixelmon was sold as the greatest NFT game ever. They promised the largest and the highest quality game the NFT space has ever seen. That's the promise that investors spent $70 million on, the hope for a virtual metaverse where you can play with friends, battle and trade Pixelmon, and more. The founder was anonymous, which is always a good sign. This guy, Cyber, he told people, Pixelmon is the next blue chip. This is financial advice. Don't do your own research. And oh boy, did people listen. Zero research was done and $70 million was raised at a price of roughly $10,000 per JPEG. Now, what do they have to show for it? Well, we've been waiting patiently here at CoffeeZilla. And finally, the team revealed their NFT artwork. Who is that? Pixelmon. It's Kevin. I assume they modeled him after the average NFT investor and brace yourselves because <laughs> it gets much worse. Bulbor. Uh, you know, get it? A, a light bulb with with eyes. Ten, $10,000, guys. $10,000. And also we have Bormon. Now, Bormon, I've got to tell you guys, is my favorite because he has the same expression I had when I realized people paid $10,000 for this. <laughs> Now, uh, off rip, let's be honest with ourselves. This looks bad. Actually, that's being polite. It looks horrible. We've regressed in time. This looks worse than Gen 1 Pokemon back in 1998. I mean, need I remind you, back then you could spend $30 on a finished game that you could play with your friends. Now in 2022, NFTs have come out and people are trying to charge you $10,000 for an unfinished game where the only friend you can play with is Kevin. And nobody likes Kevin. Now, unsurprisingly, Pixelmon have already lost 90% of their value, which is still way overpriced, but many people might be wondering, how did this happen? How does this keep happening every week? I feel like we're reading about the same story. And as the internet detective, I'm here to explain it for you guys. But I also have to credit two guys, ZachBXT and Kobe on Twitter, who helped document this meltdown. Go give those guys a follow. But now let's answer the question, what went wrong? Most of Pixelmon's success is because of a game demo that was given before launch, which looked kind of good. There wasn't a lot to it. The demo lasted like a minute and was only a basic world. But you have to understand, in the world of NFTs, even the smallest amount of effort makes you seem like you're the next Mark Zuckerberg, which is why it basically sold out despite some noticeable flaws. But given how ambitious this project is, you might wonder... Who's behind this? Who's the founder who's going to execute on this dream of Pokemon meets Metaverse meets NFTs? Because as the saying goes, it's the man that makes the project. And in this case, that man is a boy. His name is Martin and he's 21 years old and in charge of $70 million. Now we have to pause here a second and appreciate $70 million, that's AAA game funding. Like you could get a Blizzard or Activision game with that. And instead, it's been spent on someone with zero experience, which I think personally is an interesting experiment because already I'm playing $70 million games made by competent people and I hate them. I'm kind of curious what happens when someone who doesn't know what they're doing gets in charge of that $70 million. I mean, could it get worse? Well, according to early reports, yes. For example, this investor minted his NFT and literally got nothing. He didn't even get a Kevin. He got the Minecraft default cube. And I've got to say right now, that's probably the only thing I would have paid $10,000 to see. The look on this guy's face after seeing this concept art and getting this. He says, quote, thanks, Pixelmon. I got an invisible character worst mint of my life. At least give me a character. I can't even give away this. Now, I know that looks bleak, but to be fair to the Pixelmon team, they're saying that, look, that's just the NFTs. The actual game is going to be way better because they're going to outsource that work to an actual game studio, Magic Media. But if this is their plan to outsource the work, I've got to say, things are looking pretty bleak. I mean, it's kind of like being relieved Theranos hired a blood scientist to help make the tech work. It's not exactly a vote of confidence that all the actual work is being outsourced. I mean, the problem remains. The leadership, the massive promises, just having tons of money to throw at the problem doesn't mean you'll succeed. Millions of startups get funded and fail every year. What makes the difference is the idea and the leader, which in this case are both mediocre. But of course you might be thinking, wait a second, there is another option. The founder could just return the money which investors asked about, can we be refunded? The response is classic crypto. No, that's not how the space works. Over promise, under deliver? That's how this space works, right? So you might be wondering, if no refund is coming, 
How does a 21 year old with no experience build something no one's ever done before? Well, the answer is simple. You just go steal work from people who've done it before. See, apparently some of the sneak peeks of Pixelmon were actually just stock assets on the Unity store like this snake, which can be found for $159. Here's another example of the founder looking for this baby dragon he wants to use. Another guy sources it and he says, oh yeah, haha, bought that yesterday. Now I wanna be clear, the Pixelmon team claims they didn't use these assets for the actual NFTs, but instead paid artists to modify these assets slightly, which isn't really that much better, especially considering that some of the artists that were hired didn't even know their work would be sold as NFTs. For example, this guy who designed some of the dragons said, I don't actually endorse NFTs because exactly this, other people get rewards for the artist's work. And he's right. He made $6,000 designing dragons for Pixelmon and Pixelmon made $70 million. <laughs> now, not only that, remember that this whole thing is supposed to be getting designed by some AAA game studio, Magic Media, that actually has the experience, but so far, that isn't what's happened at all. In fact, in some of the models, you can see Upwork, which is a freelance website listed in the save file. So apparently part of the $70 million game you guys just bought is being designed by freelancers who might not even know if their work is gonna be used as NFTs. And all this just shows the inexperience of the founder. He's rushing around trying to fulfill impossible expectations. And the result is exactly what you'd expect. A mangled mess of stock assets, freelance work, and botched art. But to be clear, I don't think the founder holds all the blame here. Pixelmon doesn't seem like a rug pull the way a lot of NFTs are. It's a terrible investment, absolutely. But that's not the same thing as a scam where people just run away with the money. That actually hasn't happened yet. Instead, the situation is you just have a 21-year-old inexperienced developer with a $70 million war chest. And I think that's kind of on the investors. They're the ones who put millions of dollars into a game with zero credibility and that isn't out yet. And honestly, I don't think there's a good answer for this. I mean, I think it's on the people who wanted to get rich and decided to gamble because it's fine if you want to do that. But when you lose, it's kind of on you. Now, of course, I'm sympathetic to you guys, so I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging if you lost money on Pixelmon. I do wanna help you guys out with a friendly tip. There's actually an open world game called Pixelmon as well that is out today. You don't have to wait for it. And believe it or not, you can play it even if you're broke because of Pixelmon. Because, well, this Pixelmon is free. And comparing the two, a free game, which is already out, to a $70 million disaster, I think the only reaction to have here is this. So that's basically it. Pump the stock by liking and subscribing. See you in the next one.